In this presentation, we're going to look at hierarchical clustering analysis with R. Now, there, uh, well, this particular presentation is not going to be a lot of R. We're just going to get through the pre preliminaries, but the follow-up ones will be have a bit more related to R in them. Uh, first off, the preliminaries, actually, sorry, I actually just have R up there, but essentially what I'm going to use is this, for the series of presentations, the CARS data set. So it's, you can find it on my website. The website should be on the uh, description uh, of the YouTube um, presentation, so it should be down below. I change it every so often. So it, let's have a just quick look at it. That's some details there, but actually let's just go back to R and have a quick look at it. So it's a read in the CSV file. The head is, um, there we are, first six cases. The uh, names, which is the, that is to say the variables, is country, car, miles per gallon, weight, drive ratio, horsepower, displacement, cylinders. Okay. Uh, you can also get the summary of that. It actually, it tends to be quite useful. Just get a sort of sense of what each variable is about. Uh, so we have countries and we have the names of the cars and after that we got a lot of like um, numeric variables so I'm going to use all these numeric variables uh, correctly it would be some people argue that cylinders would be a categorical variable four cylinder six cylinder eight cylinder that, that's it's a more categorical variable than a continuous variable that's true but actually just for the purpose of this exercise I am going to reduce the import I, I'm just going to sort of glance over that actually but it's actually something to be considered uh, it, it, just in general actually to have a good sort of sense of what each of your variable variables is about is an important matter so that's the cars data set so anyway first off let's get into the uh, nuts and bolts of this this one's going to be very theoretical and the first thing we got to do in clustering analysis is we have to come up with our distance matrix and for a set of n observations so with the cars data set we have 38 observations the distance matrix the distance matrix will have n rows and n columns okay and each cell the ijth element of the distance matrix each cell of the distance matrix will be the distance between observation i and observation j so let's just go back here and sort of see what that set means so for argument's sake the uh, the distance between car 1 and car 6 let's say the US Buick estate wagon and the Japanese Datsun 210 uh, what is the distance between them? We're going to come back to this idea of a distance later on but okay. So how do we go about doing that? Well the function in uh, R. We're going to actually sort of stick with base R this time and later on we'll look at a few of the um, uh, libraries for clustering analysis but I'm, going to, I'm just going to stick to base R for the time being. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the dist function in R. Okay. Uh, later on we'll come back to the uh, working with other libraries such as the cluster library. And uh, we got to decide what distances we're going to use. So the default distance I'm going to use for the time being is the Euclidean distance. This is an important one, the Euclidean distance. And if you're familiar with Pythagoras' theorem, this is actually should be very straightforward. Uh, but you might find that using other metrics will give you different insights into the data, uh, the structure of your data. There's a couple of other uh, types of, there's actually quite a lot, there's uh, quite a lot of other types of uh, distance measure. Eucl the Euclidean distance is actually quite straightforward, but there's some other ones that will take into account, uh, for example, uh, correlation and stuff like that. So there's quite a lot of them there. Um, but we're going to work on the Euclidean distance, and let's have a quick look at what that means. So, sorry, just actually first off, uh, look, we'll just sort of stick with uh, the matter of the distance matrix and let's suppose we have a um, let's just get the sort of sense of what this is about so for example the Euclidean distance between um, uh, 1 and 2 case 1 and 2 would be 7.66 which means they're quite far apart whereas the Euclidean distance between K, uh, cars four and five is not point not nine which means they're quite similar so small distances uh, indicate similarity large distances indicate dissimilarity so for example five uh, five and six also seem to be quite similar this is a symmetric matrix okay and um, 
It's what it's, it's sort of output produced when you use this command here, dist. I'm going to come back to that shortly, actually, dist. Now, but I actually just have to tell it, uh, discuss what these distances are. So it's a, it's essentially the distance matrix, the proximity matrix, as it's also known, is the a sort of table of the distances between each of the cases. So for in our cars data set, there was 38 cases. Okay. So if you display the distance matrix in R, for example, by typing its name, you can uh, save it as a name and type it like that. You'll notice that only the lower triangle of the matrix is displayed. This is to remind us that the distance matrix is symmetric, since it doesn't matter which observation we consider first when we calculate a uh, distance. Okay. So the distance from, let's say, car four to car five is the same as distance as the distance from car five to car four. Okay, so it only uh, R takes advantage of this by storing only the lower triangle of the distance matrix. If you consider, like, you could have a thousand items in a um, a thousand cases for a thousand cars, that means your distance matrix will actually comply uh, comprise uh, be comprised of. 1,000 by 1,000 cells, so 1 million cells, so it's actually more so to just save space. Uh, you got, it actually does not have, uh, create any uh, issues though, that's the thing. So you can reconstruct it as a matrix if you want. If you want. Now, Euclidean distance. The Euclidean distance between points X and Y uh, with K dimensions is calculated as follows. Sorry, i just gone off screen there. And so this is the little formula here. So we have each of the so we have a case X and a case Y, okay, and each uh, each item of case X has let's say four. Uh, there's four variables associated with both of these uh, cases, these these items, and what we're going to do is compute the Euclidean distance between the two. So what we're going to do is sum up all the differences between the value, okay. And then find out what. Okay, actually, sorry, just a quick remark before getting into. It. I got a good example here. The Euclidean distance is always greater than equal to zero. Uh, the measurement would be zero for identical points, very very low for very similar points, and very high for points that are completely dissimilar. Now, so compute the Euclidean distance between the following points x, where it has the values for four variables one, five, four, and three, and y, which with the same set of variables 2, 1, 8 and 7 okay so here we have X here we have Y these are each of the four variables here okay so the first variable X is 1 Y is 2 for the second variable X is 5 and Y is 1 uh, third variable 4 and 8 and so on now what we're going to do is get the difference between the two just keep it uh, in the same direction the whole way through minus 1, 4, minus 4 and 4 okay then what we'll do is square it okay so here we have 1, 16, 16, 16 and therefore add them all up and we get the Euclidean distance of 49 now uh, sorry a squared Euclidean distance of 49 and so what we do then is we get the square root of that at the end so it is the Euclidean distance is therefore the square root of 49 it is 7. Straightforward enough uh, really and again if you're familiar with the Pythagoras theorem you can see that's directly coming from the Pythagoras theorem. Uh, there's a couple of other ones here the square root of Euclidean distance between the two points x and y is as follows essentially it's the exact same again but the only difference is that we don't get the square root at the end okay so the squared Euclidean distance is preferred to the Euclidean distance because it's slightly less computationally complex without loss of information. So it contains the same sort of information as the uh, Euclidean distance. Okay, so that's why you might use it in preference to the. Uh, um, the, the you, that's why you might use the squared Euclidean distance uh, in preference to the Euclidean distance. Remember, if you have one thousand cases you have to compute a let's say half a million Euclidean distances or half a million squared Euclidean distances so it actually for a thousand by a thousand it can save well not exactly it's a, it's close to half a million uh, you could save uh, a good bit of calculation time by not getting the square root here the squared Euclidean distance is, will be 49 you just don't get the square root of it okay 
So that's the Euclidean distance and squared Euclidean distance. Now the default setting for R is the Euclidean distance, which I'm going to be happy enough with. Um, in some calculations you might go with squared Euclidean distance later on. Okay. Uh, I'm going to come back to um, the standardized Euclidean distance uh, later on. But what I'm going to do actually is going to just skip over that. I'm just reala realizing how much time I'm used up. And quickly talk once uh, more about one more uh, distance measure. I didn't. I actually intended to go into something else now, but I just for the sake of time, I will uh, go back to that later. I'm going to talk about standardization in the next presentation. But what I'm going to do now is just talk about the Manhattan city block distance. It's one more type of distance. The city block distance between two points x and y. K dimensions is as follows. It's the ab it's the sum of the absolute values of the differences. It's always greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero and it would be zero for identical points and high for points with little similarity. Let's look at a quick example here. Let's just go down. So the squared, uh, sorry, the Manhattan distance for this uh, example here, one, three, four, and two, five, two, five, and two, guess the uh, difference of each uh, for each variable for both cases. So here it's 1 and 5, so we get a difference of minus 4, 1, minus 1, 0. And then get the absolute value of that, so just disregard the sign and then add them up. So we get 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0. So the uh, city distance here, the uh, city block distance of the Manhattan distance is 6. If you, you consider it, it's like if you're walking around a grid that you can't walk through a building, you have to walk around the side of it. So that's why you might use, call it the city block distance. Uh, if you're in Manhattan and walking around a grid, uh, one of the blocks. Okay, that is a, starting off on hierarchical clustering and we had a look at the um, distance measures. We had a look at the, the distance matrix and the distance measures. We'll go and the next one we'll look at uh, scaling and standardization and stuff like that.